We haven't gone all night, so... Might as well start, shall we? You know, I didn't intend for tonight to go down the road that it's about to go down, but out of all people, I figured you've been here the longest, you've known me the most, and you definitely put up with me the most, so who better get this out with than you? I will say so far that it's looking like we won't end up in a fountain at 2am at least. You know, we graduate in the morning and I'm not saying it was perfect by any means. I'm gonna stop you before we really get into it. Is this just a way to cope over the fact that you're getting closer to getting married and paying taxes than you were in high school? Or is this just a confession of the past four years? So where would you like to start then? Career outlook, dumb decisions? Concubines, as you love to call them, or... Hey now, we'll definitely talk about those lovely ladies soon enough. But, I mean, my past four years here have just been a plethora of dumb decisions. I mean, I have two majors and one is communications and the other is film studies, <laughs> you know? But, um, out of all things that I want to talk about tonight, I think I want to start with something that you might have heard me call group therapy. You mean what you and your moron friends call blacking out four days a week? <laughs> I mean, I call it group therapy for a reason. You are the person that I have found out of the hundreds of thousands of people that I've met in my life that just understands. And when you asked me that we, if I could speak in your capstone, um, and then told me that we were going to talk about what it would be like after you were gone, I was scared because I did not want to face the fact that at some point in my life, in my college life, you would be gone. You will visit, but it won't be like this where we can go to the bar and like black out and just do dumb ass shit like jump in the fountain. But thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything because I do not know where I would be at this point <laughs> without you. And I know that you know that. And I can't convey that in words. The fact that you will leave, not leave is such a harsh word, but move on to bigger and better things. It excites me like a lot because I know that you will do beautiful things. You are a, a light. And it does not stop shining, no matter how dark it is. <laughs> Hey, 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 um, 
it's me. I know. I know I was I promised you I wouldn't FaceTime you or call you after the bars anymore, but we we didn't think you promised, so just just hear me out just, just this one time. I just I wanna start by by apologizing for um uh the last time that you came over and cooked me dinner, I drank all the wine again, and then that night I left the towel in the middle of the bathroom, and you always complain about it, and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but about things that actually matter to me and you, because you matter to me, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm sorry I'm insecure, like, when we went to the themed party, I know, I know you were with me, and I know we matched, and I know it was awesome, but I, I know how guys are, especially in an environment like that. And, and I know that I'm important to you, I know you, you introduced me to your sisters, and I just, I'm sorry I'm weird around them, I just, I want them to like me, because I'm a reflection of you, and I just, I want you to be proud of me at the, at the end of the day. I know I apologize more more than I should, and I know that my doubts and my insecurities hurt us, and I can only tell you these things after I go out, but I'm gonna leave my door unlocked. If you wanna come over in the morning and play nurse and yell at me, you're more than welcome to. Um, yeah, I don't really think I have, uh, I have anything else to say. I hope I see you tomorrow. Um, I love you. You know why I'm here, right? I'm not gonna yell at you, but I have a few things to say. You know, usually after I go to the bars and wake up, I wake up to people telling me about how I was, so this is a nice change of pace. Quit being an asshole and let me talk. I will get you McDonald's if you just hear me. Okay, okay, but just know I'm doing this only for the large coke. I am doing it for us. I love you and only you, and I'm talking to you now because you need to be a bit nicer to yourself. Okay. No, really. You keep pushing me away and it makes me believe that you don't know that I love you. I am for you and you are for me. Now let's go. That's pretty powerful. What'd you tell her? You know, I think it might be the nicest thing a woman has ever told me after a night of blacking out and quite possibly ever. So, you said? I told her she was pretty Kina, and then I got my large Coke. Hey man, I really want to thank you for tonight. I, uh, I appreciate it. Hey dude, no problem. I figured that realistically we should probably go out the way we came in. I mean, no, that, that's right. Except now we aren't taking pulls from Fleshman and chasing it down with Sprite from Herbs. Yeah, I mean, now we drink beer and don't have to share a 10x10 10 10 concrete box with a stranger. Yeah, for, uh, for better or for worse. Can I ask you a quick question though? You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. I mean, that's kind of a dick move to pull on somebody more than enough beers in, but go for it. There was a night a few weeks back where we went drinking and you got a call and went to the bathroom. You came out silently. Can we talk about that? Yeah, dude, of course. Just just so you know though, like, after this, I'm gonna have to kick you out. Not because we're about to get really deep, which we are, but my mom knows that I had a drink before graduation. She is gonna kill me. And you know, she's gonna be here in like 12 hours. Indeed. So quit trying to get me out and tell me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna. Here we are again, talking to the mirror. Nothing's changed these years, has it? Hey, I 
know exactly what that call was about. You can sit here and pretend this doesn't bother you, that you actually love these people at home. You know that you are the reason that they were all driven away. You don't have to play pretend. Well, since you know me the best, we might as well just lay this out now. What do you have to say? Where do you want to start? Um, we can talk about how you haven't fostered the relationship, how you haven't cared about them, how you've specifically done things to drive them away. You know, you'd think after Robbie, you would have learned what it means to be a person in somebody's life. Don't, don't you dare bring that up. Why? You're not a brother. You're not a friend. You're not a leader. You're not even a man. Any one of those things wouldn't leave Joliet for a quick, soulless prophet. First of all, you took a bond. You had an oath that you would take care of him. And? It's one that I kept. Kept? <laughs> you, when, let's start here. When visitation was allowed after everything settled, you didn't go see him, you didn't call his parents, you FaceTimed him. The one thing that you could have done that could have made anything better, you instead took out your phone and FaceTimed him? The most depraved human connection that there is after somebody nearly lost their life you FaceTimed him? I couldn't bring myself to look at him knowing that I could have stopped it. And that's unforgivable. Yeah, I'm sure you thought he was going to get out. Remind me, how'd the funeral go? I didn't go. Exactly. For something as life-changing and important as that event was, you didn't go. You ran. You're not a man. There's more to manhood than just being strong. You know that more than, well, I do. Like what? Women? Don't make me laugh. You're stuck in the tar pit of your ways. All the women who just graciously drift into your life, the fun ones, the ones who actually love you, the blurry ones, the one night stands, all of it? Are you really gonna tell me that you're using that to fill the void within you and that's what makes you a man? Yeah, well, I'm happy with the one I'm with now. Are you? I mean, you're pushing her away, and you're deliberately doing things to make her run. You're poisoning the well like you have with every other woman that has stumbled into your life. Alright, fine, but since you're the real me, then I know exactly what I need to say to you. Do you want to start with your secrets? How about we can start with those, big guy? How about you want to start with the night you spent with Matt? Do you want to talk about how much anxiety weighs on your shoulders? Do you want to talk about all the things that are written on your secret little Twitter account? Do you want to talk about how when you call your mom, she really doesn't notice how frequent your mood swings are? Because we can start with any of those. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Couldn't believe that I had to bully you into a corner to get this out of you.
because you're giving me all these answers, but not the right answer, okay? If this bottle could talk, or if these walls could talk, we would know that it's not that you're shaken or you're lost. It's at your core that you are completely, completely alone. And you know, I'm not gonna sit here and spill all your secrets to the world, because quite frankly, isn't that what this conversation is? What else? What else are you gonna throw at me? You know, that we should have killed you off a long time ago? Like father, like son? Should have felt that noose tighten a couple years ago so you wouldn't actually have to face your issues? Huh? Or what? Could it be that no matter who enters your life or what you do, you can't get rid of me? Look, we can sit here, we can argue all day, but I need to get this poison out of my body and hopefully one day I'll get rid of you too. We're two halves of the same whole and one day hopefully we'll mesh. But until then, I know I can't get rid of you. Good luck with that Maxwell Daniel. Don't you gotta go puke or something? Now you know. Jeez, man, I, I don't even know what to say. Hey man, I didn't, I didn't mean to dump all those issues on you. Like, I, I'm sorry, but I just, I figured if I spoke these things into the universe, the simulation or God or whatever's out there will, you know, hear these things manifest and start making it better for me. I'm surprised you're letting me get words in before kicking me out. I need a hug.